Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at the collection, analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. And we are in the module on fitting and graphical handling of data. We are using R to do fitting as well as plotting to understand data better. In this session, we are going to look at calibration, fitting and hypothesis testing. Calibration as we discussed uh, uh, some time back is very essential and it should be carried out periodically. After calibration is done, typically calibration table or curve or plot is generated and sometimes for doing this fitting is used. So, you will have a material or uh, some process for which you know what the reading should be. And you will use your equipment and you will read what the equipment gives as the reading and the difference is to be corrected because we know the calibration material, we will use that to correct. So, when you work on a new material, when there is a difference, then you can correct for the actual reading. And for doing this, uh, typically one also has to look at the data and generate the calibration curves or calibration plots. Uh, one example is for example, calibration that is done in nano indenter if you are doing uh, um, indentation experiments. So, we will uh, in our case studies uh, look at a calibration exercise to give you an idea of how it works. Uh, typically, it involves fitting and that is why it is uh, in this uh, um, topic. The second one is that uh, we have been looking at uh, fitting and uh, we first looked at uh, linear fitting and then we looked at uh, cases where it can be turned into a linear form and fitted and also non-linear. For example, we fitted for specific heat which goes as AT plus BT cube. Now, there are functions that can be linearized. We have already seen some examples. For example, it is exponential, you can take logarithm and uh, if it is uh, exponential with uh, A plus B exponential, then you can take Y minus A and uh, then take logarithm that will again make it linear. And if it is power law, we saw one example that by taking logarithm you can make it a straight line. But there are also cases for example, if y is a x by b plus a x, you can take 1 by x versus 1 by y and that will be linear that is known as a, a line weaver Burke plot. You can also plot y by x versus y or x by y versus x and they also produce linear plots. The idea behind these is to just see that there is a linear relationship that exists. After that, you can actually do the analysis and find the parameters for the linear um, fit. One more example where you will see uh, which can be turned into a linear form is the uh, Halpage relationship for the flow stress uh, in materials, uh, which is related to the grain size uh, through this uh, 1 by root d relationship. Of course, if you do the transformation 1 by root d as x, then you get sigma is equal to sigma naught plus kx. So, this is the intercept and this is the slope. These two sigma naught and k are known as the Halpage parameters and we will do one exercise. So, we will take the data from NIST monograph and which gives yield strength as a function of grain size at 295 Kelvin. And the monograph also tells you that the Halpage fitted parameters are 18.6 plus or minus 1.7 for the intercept and 112 plus or minus 2 for the um, slope of the Halpage relationship. And the standard deviation in the flow stress itself is 11 MPa. Of course, once you know these two errors, uh, it should be easy for you to calculate what the error in sigma y should be. So, this is something that we have already looked at. But how do these numbers come about? So, we will take the same data which was used to produce these numbers and uh, generate uh, these numbers for ourselves uh, in order to understand how it works. So, it is a simple uh, linear fitting that we are going to do. So, fitting uh, as we will we have seen is done for several reasons. One is to obtain parameters when functional form is known. For example, we are assuming that Halpage relationship holds and then we want to know what is sigma naught k is. So, you can do that or to identify if there are correlations, right. So, there you can do all this uh, uh, transformations like take log or take y by x versus y or x by y versus x and things like that and plot. And if they show a straight line, then you know that the functional relationship could be of the form Ax by b plus x for example, right. 
So, you can do a fitting exercise and that is where uh, plotting is very useful, graphical analysis is very useful because you can just plot and see and if there is a relationship that you see, then you can try to find the functional form or if the functional form is known, then you can obtain the parameters. And getting parameters from data and estimating the parameters of the underlying probability distribution is something that we have already seen. So, this is done and so it is part of the fitting exercise. But fitting can also be done to test if the data supports a given functional form, right. Uh, so, this is the hypothesis testing. For example, you can take the data and you can ask the question, is it true that the flow stress is related to the grain size as power minus half, right. So, that is a question that you can ask and to test whether the given data supports this hypothesis is the hypothesis testing. And uh, so, for example, you can ask the question fit the copper strength data will we get an exponent of uh, d as minus 0.5. And this problem is the problem of hypothesis testing. So, we are going to deal with this in greater detail not just for copper, we will take uh, lots of materials for which data has been collected uh, by uh, one of the researchers. It is available in the literature available for everybody in raw form to download and do the analysis. So, that is something that we are also going to do as part of our case study in the next uh, um, module. But for now, we will at least see how to fit and uh, if you assume that there is a given form, can we get the parameters? That is the part that we are doing now and we will continue doing in this session and the next. So, hypothesis testing is something that we have already seen at some level. For example, we said okay, what is the probability that the mean will lie within some range? So, you can also have a hypothesis that uh, the true mean is uh, this or it is in this range and then you can test whether the hypothesis is true. You can also make hypothesis about variance and uh, test and you can uh, test the hypothesis about means from different uh, uh, experiments. So, it naturally leads to analysis of variance uh, which is something that we are going to look at uh, in uh, this module in one of the sessions. And from there it also leads to design of experiments and so on. So, we will do a design of experiments uh, case study also in the next module. So, for now what we are trying to do is to do the fitting exercise. So, let us uh, do that. Um, so, let us start R version 3.6.1 and what we want to do is the hull patch for copper. So, let us just try to uh, do this. Okay. So, what is the uh, process? We first want to read the data and it is in CSV format. It is copper strength grain size at 295 Kelvin uh, in CSV format. This data is taken from the NIST monograph and, uh, and then we are going to take the grain size and store it in the variable capital D. We are going to take the yield strength and store it in the variable Ys and the small d is 1 by square root of capital D. So, this is um, d to the power minus half and then we are going to plot d versus yield strength and we are also going to fit uh, yield strength as a function of d. So, the intercept and uh, the um, slope should give us the hull patch parameters. So, you can see that uh, the data um, the, the d versus yield strength is like this. So, this is actually square root of the 1 by square root of the grain size and uh, so you can see that it uh, uh, is like this. So, we can try to see where the fitted line is. So, the fitted line goes through all these points and so it does seem to follow this uh, relationship and of course, you can also plot the <coughs> residuals and you can see that about 0 on either side the data is uh, spread and there are a few data points which are slightly away, but most of the data is between minus 10 and uh, or, or between minus 20 and plus 20. So, you can see that the data is uh, um, that the residuals is uh, uh, random or it looks random. However, if you plot the QQ norm for example, um, 
do not see a straight line. So, there is there seems to be some problem I mean it is not uh, the, the, the error does not seem to be normally distributed. Uh, you can also look at the fit uh, and of course, you get 18.5 and 12.4 and you can call for summary fit. So, it gives you 18.5, 1.7 and 112.3672. So, if you look at the uh, fitting parameters that was given by the monograph, so it is 18.6 plus or minus 1.7, 112 plus or minus 2 and in this case we see that so, we get 18.5 instead of 18.6, the error is 1.7 and that is right and 112, so that is 112 uh, and 2 is the error in the slope of D uh, to the power minus half that is. So, so we, we see that we get the, uh, the parameters that is described in uh, Hall patch. Uh, but there is a problem if you want to know if it is actually d to the power minus half because uh, the Halpatch relationship uh, is like this. So, the Halpatch relationship uh, is uh, like this and so if you want to know whether it is d to the power minus half, uh, one of the things that you can do is to take logarithm of sigma minus sigma naught and logarithm of d and uh, try to see if um, that gives you a factor of uh, half um, and, and logarithm of uh, uh, k then will be the um, uh, it, it, it will be sigma minus sigma naught. So, you take log. So, you will have log k and d to the power some minus n. So, if you so you will have log k minus n times log d. So, that the n should be half or, or minus half and k should be given by the intercept, um, but we do not know sigma naught. So, we assume that it is a constant. So, we, we just take, um, so we can just take the data and it is not quite um, complete, but one can try and do this exercise. So, let us say that we have d, so we take logarithm of d uh, and store it as y okay. and we store as x the logarithm of um, stress, right. So, we can see whether we can plot this and does it follow a straight line? Okay, so, let us try to do the fitting and the fitting is y uh, sorry x as a function of y. So, fit to, so the parameters are like this. So, if you take exponential 4.9680, so that is 143. Uh, when we fitted we got uh, 112, uh, so the k happens to be 143 and uh, y happens to be minus uh, 0.3, so it is not minus uh, 0.5, right, so it is minus 0.4. So, it, there seems to be slight deviation, so you can also um, look at the um, line that you get. Um, so, we can look at the error. Um, So, again the error, um, okay. 
So, we called it uh, fit 2. So, let us uh, do this again uh, and then So, you can see that this is a line and, and the data is uh, different. So, this is uh, slightly off of course, uh, but if you look at the okay, so, um, fit two. so, you see that about uh, um, 0 on either side this is again uh, normally distributed we can probably normally distributed we can look at uh, um, q q norm ok. So, so this certainly uh, seems to be the, the error now seems to be normally distributed, um, but we so we assumed that d goes as power minus half and we fitted and we got some parameters. And as far as fitting goes that is good enough because if you look at the NIST data this is from several different sources the data is not even from a single source. So, if you look at the grain size versus yield strength and all the existing data can be put in one single form and within some 11 MPA plus or minus you can actually predict the yield stress which is very good. However, if you ask a different question namely that is the uh, power minus half and try to do the uh, fitting you see that it is not so, it is only approximate because there is still a problem sigma minus sigma naught and uh, um, we have not taken that sigma naught into account uh, or if you assume that the sigma naught is 18.5 like we uh, got earlier uh, you can do this exercise you can try subtract it and then for the remaining quantity you can try to do k uh, log d kind of fitting. Um, a log k plus uh, uh, m log d kind of fitting and find out what the m and uh, log k values turn out to be and uh, see if uh, that uh, actually gives you this uh, functional form. But we are going to do it in greater detail in the next uh, module uh, when we look at some case studies. So, we will take uh, Halpech as a specific case study and uh, check if there is uh, enough statistical evidence and uh, any physical reason why we expect it to be minus half or could it be something else. So, that is a question that we are going to look at uh, slightly later, uh, but this is a data that is available and um, uh, and, and there are there is lots more uh, in, in this uh, monograph. Uh, it also gives the yield strength as a function of uh, percentage cold work and, and temperature and so on and so forth and impurities uh, concentration of impurities and so on and so forth. So, it is a good idea to explore the data and uh, uh, try to see if there are trends and uh, for example, if the two data are correlated and, and questions like that uh, one can ask and uh, one can use fitting as the starting point for exploring the data further. So, in the next session we are going to look at analysis of variance and that will bring us to the end of this module and then we will move on to the case studies module. Thank you.